Mike Kern here with Adam Emenecker for another shoot around segment. And Adam, quite a weekend this past weekend as we have uh, reached the midway point of the conference schedule. Uh, Indiana State and Bradley, that was a battle of champions Oof. on Saturday in Terre Haute. Sold out crowd. Uh, game goes to overtime. Both teams played really well. Your thoughts on that game in particular? We had several other this weekend that were phenomenal, but let's let's talk about that one first. Yeah, man, Mike. So I didn't get to watch it live, but watching the replay, what a, what an awesome game. What an absolutely awesome game. Both teams, honestly, at their best and getting big time contributions, not necessarily from the guy you expected. Right. I think highlighting going into the game, you would have highlighted Robbie Avila and Connor Hickman. And both those two were good. But, man, there were some guys that were absolutely fantastic. Jason Kent for Indiana State ended with 17 points, 16 rebounds, played all 45 minutes against his former team, his former program in Bradley. And Duke Dean, unbelievable in the second half with 31 points, incredible shot making, and 6 and 9 from 3. This, this game had absolutely everything that you could ever want or expect an awesome crowd, a lot of coaching cat and mouse with Bradley switching to his own in the second half and styming Indiana state's defense a little. And, you know, Indiana state looked in control at times in that second half, but the fight from the Bradley Braves and then going into overtime, that was just as fun of a game as, as I could imagine seeing. And it seemed like you were there, right, Mike? It seemed like the crowd yeah, was it, fantastic. It, it was one of the best crowds that I've been a part of in, in a long time, and we've had some good ones. So great atmosphere, um, great game. Both teams play really well. Yeah, and Indiana State coming up. I mean, it's a big week for them, right? So not only the home game against Bradley, this week going to Belmont, and, and a Belmont team that's in the middle of the pack now in the conference, but they've been a different team at home. Eight and one at home, only lost to Northern Iowa. And then – a bit of a revenge match for Indiana State, getting a chance to host Drake on, on February 3rd. A lot of eyeballs are going to be on that one and expect a very, very similar uh, type of environment as we saw against Bradley. And, you know, I, I think when you look at the Indiana State schedule outside of this week, they only have one other conference game where they're playing a team with a winning record in the league, and that's Southern Illinois February 17th. So if Indiana State gets through this week, you got to look ahead to their schedule and think they're pretty well positioned to continue to go through the league if they keep playing well. And, you know, now that we have a 20 game schedule, but we have 12 teams, there's a couple teams you only play once. And one of those teams is at the top of the standing Indiana state only having to play you and I once already crossed that bridge. Yeah. Northern Iowa playing very well. Uh, Drake got the better of them on Saturday and another great game and another great atmosphere over the weekend. Uh, talk, talk if you will, about the Drake Northern Iowa contest on Saturday. Of course, uh, Drake playing Indiana State next Saturday in Terre Haute, as you mentioned. Yeah, I, I mean, from a sellout in uh, Terre Haute to a sellout in Des Moines, which is just fantastic for the league, right? I mean, just awesome environments. And the, the Panthers playing without Bone, Bone Bourne, just unfortunate to have him sick and, and not be able to play. And, you know, with a kid like Bone Bourne, a local kid, uh, from around the Des Moines area. That game just means so much to you. Must have must have been in a really bad spot if he was unable to play. But I thought the Northern Iowa response was great. I thought Trey Campbell played really well in that game. And you saw the back and forth between both teams. You and I even having a 10-point lead early in the second half. But Drake, as they've done in a couple games this season, a couple conference games, just really closed well in the last four minutes. I thought Connor Enright was really good with 14 points, knocking down some shots from distance. And of course, Tucker DeVries, 29 points, seven rebounds, six assists from the reigning player of the year. That That's all you can ask from a guy like that. And, you know, Mike, we were talking a second ago about Indiana State and their upcoming games. Drake's got some tough matchups as well. So hosting SIU, moving to Bradley, so hosting SIU at the end of the uh, week, going to Bradley into next week, and a pretty tough schedule for Drake. SIU at Bradley have to go to you and I and then host Bradley at the end of the year. We, and we talked about the Indiana State game. So a lot of tough contests coming up for the Drake Bulldogs. But that also means opportunity, especially against Indiana State, to get back to where they want to be at the top of the standings. Yeah, and Coach DeVries mentioned this on our coaches call earlier this week. 
and he said the the opportunity of playing teams that are going to be quad one and quad two yeah. are there for a team buying for an at large bid if, if the Drake Bulldogs do not win our tournament in St. Louis. Another great game on the weekend. I hate, I, I hate looking backward too much, but so many great games over the weekend. SIU coming back from a 20-point second-half deficit at a big crowd at Murray State. Murray State yeah. leading the league in attendance, but SIU comes back from 20 down and shuts the racers down in the second half. Uh, another another look back at another great game this week, weekend. Talk about that one. Yeah, isn't that funny? We always try to look ahead, but it's hard not to talk about what we experienced over the weekend, which was awesome. And the third game, odd that this is the third game that we had mentioned. You know, I I, I had the opportunity to go to Murray, Kentucky and work this game. And I, th that arena is great. Those fans are phenomenal. I thought that was a really good atmosphere for what seems to be a budding rivalry between SIU and Murray State. And, you know, if, if you think about the Salukis just a few weeks ago when the, when they were kind of on their win streak and then they stumble against Drake, but they come back and they play really well in the first half against Bradley, they're up 23 and then lose that game at home, which was an absolute heartbreaker. Well, they kind of got their revenge, right? They kind of got their revenge down 20 in the second half to Murray State, 14 minutes to go down 20 and getting the chance to see Xavier Johnson in person. Man, that guy is unflappable. He, he's playing a bunch of schemes. People are physical with him. He's at a big deficit, but he's just going to do what he does. He makes the right play every single time. And Xavier Johnson with a big, big time clutch bucket with just about three minutes to, or excuse me, three seconds to go to, to help uh, SIU get their first lead of the game. Just great games coming down to the wire, great atmospheres. This is 100% exactly what Valley basketball at the end of January and February is all about. Yeah, and one more game uh, that that involved a big comeback by a league team was Missouri State coming back from 16 down against Drake. Also in the second half, Austin Mason with 36 on Wednesday, three 30-point games this week, including his. Yeah. He was named Player of the Week, and rightly so for his efforts this past week as the Bears win against Drake at home and, and then go to Valpo and win a very hard-fought game in Valparaiso, Indiana. All right, let's talk about the, the rest of the way. We are at uh, 10 games left for everybody. Uh, Arch Madness is right around the corner. And your thoughts about what it becomes a very hard part of the schedule for all the teams with just 10 games remaining. But people are tired. <laughs> yeah. It's been a very yeah. grueling first 10. So talk about the, the stretch as we uh, close out late January and early February. Yeah, this, this is where the mental part of the game starts to become really tough. And physically, to your point, you're getting used to that Wednesday, Saturday or Tuesday, Sunday coming back. And it's two games every week and you're getting through this routine. But now you're five weeks into that routine and, and have been playing for a few months. So every team knows each other. Every team scouts well. And, and honest, honestly, this is when stuff starts to get real. So it's your second time through a lot of the league. A lot of freshmen and younger players start hitting a wall, just not having to have this grind before. And this is where what you're really looking for out of these teams is perseverance, focus, and what is the competitive makeup of your team. That tells you the true nature of a lot of these guys. So this is this is the area you mentioned the Drake game against Murray State, a, a game many people were surprised by, especially when Drake built the early early lead. But it, it is that mental edge that really makes a big difference as you get into these late January, early February games where Arch Madness feels too far away to touch, but it's kind of looming in the background. It, it really it does start to grind on these teams, these coaches and these players. I think this is when we really get the best feel for what teams have an opportunity to make a run in March. Well, it's not too far away. Arch Madness single session tickets go on sale February 1st. And uh, if you haven't bought your all-session ticket already, go do so, fans. And it's going to be a great tournament. Yeah, can't wait. I mean, based on the games we saw this weekend, Mike, if we get a couple of those in St. Louis, man, it, we're, we're in for a show. All right. Adam, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again next Monday. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. All right. Bye-bye.